recording? Yeah. I wanted to get your signature. We're trying to get pickable courts inside Central Park so they don't, they don't leave us alone. So we're trying to get um, pickable courts by 86th Street. And we're just trying to get as many signatures as possible. First and last name only. You don't have to put no email or anything. So they can have their own area to play pickable. 86 and what? 86 Central Park Precinct. Mm. By the Great Lawn, this is where they can build at least 6 to 12. Because right now they're using our courts. And we want them to have their own court. They're going to build two pickable courts here. Mm -hmm. But we want at least an additional 12 so that we can have. We don't want them to take over this court. Because what happened in West Fork, you know what happened in West, West Fork this week, right? They took all three courts and they painted the pickable courts. And Jasmine was furious. They're trying to find out who did it. So, uh, I have no idea who did it. But, um, we're trying to prevent them from taking over all the other courts. They could play here. The other three courts behind us is our court. They could play in the fourth, but they got to share. They can't take over the court. So, that's why we're trying to get a petition so they can have their own court by the prison. They could have these three here, but have their own as well. Because if they got tennis courts, why can't they have people for courts for them? Here they're gonna have two, but that's not gonna be enough. Because pickleball is America's fastest growing sport. We have now over 1,600 members this team reach area alone. So we're trying to keep it nice and friendly. We want to have their area. They can come here, but they'll be able to have their own area. So that's what I'm trying to do. Signatures, if you want to sign, you can do it. Can, uh, can I please ask your name and what do you do? My name is uh, Eddie Valentine. And um, I've been here since 1971, for more than 50 years. And normally I'm a humble player. But since 2018, four of us, Carlos, Dominic, Howie, and I, started bringing pickleball here. It was one more. When it says court number nine, that was the original pickleball court. Now, we have these three courts here. Can you play, can we please walk over there and show us? Yes. Okay, these three courts, as you notice the lines, these are the three pickable courts. And then, the fourth and fifth. Now, if you got game, those are the courts you play in. The that one says number nine yes. and number eight. So this is for the dealers, the intermediate, and that's for the advanced players. You play pickleball? Yes, I play pickleball. And originally, this fourth court, that says nine. This was originally because they didn't want David, which is a minor, to play with the adults. So they sent them here, but eventually this became the challenges court. So if you have any game in pickleball, um, number eight and number nine is where you play the heavy duty games here. So that's basically. Uh, Can we please show the like that that was? That what happened? To show that court too. Yeah, this one here. Yeah. Court number nine, as you can see, they removed the tape. Normally there's a tape on this court, and there's a line on that one. Oh, no, and this, is, this area is exclusively for handball players. There's no pickleball. Well, I, I want to show this line here, but it's not so no. Tennis is good. You see this red line? Yes. And also, this was an error. This, these, are, these are too short. So that's why they, they did the lines, then they realized that it was too small. It's, they don't have enough room, so that's why they don't play pickleball there. Basically, there's a sign that tells you, it's posted on the wall, which if any handball player wants that stiff court, the pickleballers have to get off the court. So I want to show you, it's posted on the fence. So here is the rules and regulations. For better, for if you have an advanced game, and this right here is the upper west side pickleball, the guidelines. Here it tells you right here to play, put your paddle down. Here it goes. Four. We share the court with the paddle ballers and hand ballers and others who have been here for decades before. So the fourth and fifth court net should only be put up when paddle ballers and hand ballers are not waiting to play. If they ask for those fourth and fifth nets, please take those nets down so they know 
if we ask him to take it down, yeah. they got to take it down. And this was just put up last week. And this was put up last week. So this way, there's no problem. Can we please walk out a little? Sure. Uh, about, let's talk a little bit about Humboldt. Humboldt, well this here, this court was opened up in 1938 under Rob Moses. He's opened up. Now the first guy who played was a young Irish guy who climbed the fence in 1938 and went over and played. He died before COVID. His name was Frank Larkin, L-A-R-K-I-N. He was an Irish firefighter who used to be able to punch the ball with both hands. And when I got him, 71, he was the one that took us in. This was all Irish, Jewish, and Italian handball players at that time. There was no other sports, maybe some of the tennis players. And then by the 1970s, minorities came in. And um, handball started to die, the small ball started to die down by the 1990s. And then Big Blue took over this area by the 80s, 90s, 2000s. But handball is dying down in this part. So this is why the greater number of people now are the pickup balls. So 2018, the majority of the players, we still have a lot of racquetball and paddleball tournaments. We used to have the pro Kenneth racquetball tournament here. And the paddleball tournaments were here at all times. But then something happened with the conservancy where the, the price for a permit went up to $10,000. And the, and the, the racquetball tournament stopped and the paddle, it was just too expensive. These guys get to play, they get a permit but see, these are high school kids, they get to play for free. But if you are not part of a school group, you're paying $10,000 for any other bank to be held. And if you want a bench, we have a bench here, named after someone. I think it's very important. Now this, there's a bench dedicated to this guy. Okay? He was one of the guys that was here his name was Abraham, and he was here for many years. So, when he died, April of 2021, there's a, there's a bench dedicated. Each bench is $10,000. And so, there's a clock here with his name on it. Abraham Rollers. And I said, yeah, it was our cell. And, and next, my name will be there. Hopefully. Yeah, that's, and that's $10,000 to put that on a bench. Can we please walk out? Yes, yes. Uh, Adam, Adam, get this baby report to the Just so I don't have less noise, I have more questions for you. Yes. Um, Can I have a seat? Huh? Can I have a seat? Can I yeah. have a seat? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. All right. How many sports you play? I play handball, paddleball, racquetball, and pickleball. How long you been doing it? I started playing handball in 1968 in the South Bronx. I was maybe 14 years of age when I started playing. And I've been playing most of my life, since the age of 14, since 1968. So, I've been playing most of my life. What is it that you like? The thing is that, that at that time, everybody was playing handball. Most of the kids were playing handball. And in my school, they had some of the best handball players. School didn't open up at eight. But there were people young. We were in the handball court at seven o'clock in the morning, where they rained or where they snow. Even on the weekends we were there. There was lines to play, and some of the kids from my school became real famous handball players. So that was the era we used to play with a pink ball. It was called the sporty. That ball was only twenty-five cents. But my goodness. You had guys that were so skilled that they could beat you with their serves alone. All they did was serve you 21 zip.
not sound great in certain spot. You had guys who soft serve you with both their hands, the left and the right, zip you. Then you had guys that had the entire game. Angel Marquez, he was, well, the best at that time was really Ruben Gonzalez. He was from Mount Eden. Now, they used to call him the Mount Eden Bomber. And that's why they say, in Hamburg, you could pick up any shot except the roller. Because with Ruben Gonzalez, if you kill the ball and there was any life, Ruben would die and would take the shot. It was one of the greatest ever. And him and Buddy, broken up. Buddy was incredible, so those were the two top guys. Now, Ruben Gonzalez stepped off the court, played his last tournament, West 4th, 1978. He was playing in the middle court against Buddy. And it was a real tight game, but um, Ruben Gonzalez ended up winning that game. Now, when Ruben stepped off halfway, he got into racket, and he dominated that sport for more than 15 years. He became like number one in the nation, and he remained top among the top 10 players for 15 years. Incredible, incredible. Now, Ruben is playing pickleball now, but um, he dominated this game. And then after Ruben left, uh, that it was Buddy and Angel Marquez. Now, Angel originally came from Jackson Avenue in the South Bronx. When you got off the train, it was one wall, but you couldn't play there for free. You had to play for soda, or you had to play for money. And I remember, I didn't have that much money. So I would play for 50 cents soda, because that time it was 35 cents and 50 cents soda. But the other guys were playing for $5 minimum. They were playing for hundreds of dollars, 150. And they were playing all weird. There was a guy named Chino who would go to Cortona Park and he had to play with a chair in his hand. And Buddy would have to play with a chair in his hand against some of the guys who were playing three ball And they would play for hundreds of dollars. And that's the way. Those were the incredible games of that era. I was never at that league like that. But um, I we traveled all over. As a kid from the Bronx, I traveled to my head. I saw this guy. This boy. I got a hundred cent street. Wherever there was handball in the Bronx, we went and we played. And at that time, you didn't have to leave your park because you had great, great players. By nine o'clock in the morning, no matter where you live, there was people already lining up. On the down. So what Angel did? He was originally from Jackson. His father's name was Shadow, and he had a brother named Eddie. Now, at that time, he was a good artist. So what he did, his mother and brother, father and brother broke up, and he went to Arthur Avenue, and he, 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 he set up lights, and he made a list of all the guys that were good. He made a list of all the guys, and we went after them, one after the other. And he would invite them, and you had, at two o'clock in the morning, you could go to Arthur Park, and you had lights. You could go at three. I used to be there at two o'clock in the morning, Everything was money. Angel was the best. And at that time, he used to have a partner called Dino, who used to wear a sweater, even in the summer. But those two guys were phenomenal. People came from all over the city to play Angel Market. And he made a list of everybody. And he beat them all. One behind the other. He had a strategy. But uh, his hands were incredible. He would, one of his things that he would do to practice was, he would take the garbage cans behind the long line and he would throw the ball with it right. And in the air, with the garbage cans behind the long line, he will kill the ball. He would do that for half an hour. He'll do that with his right. Then he'll do the same thing here with his right. He'll kill, kill, kill. No one worked at Hamburg more than Angel Marquez. He, did, he turned it into an art. A lot of people didn't like him. He had a particular style. I never had a problem with Angel. Angel to me was always up. I've always had nothing but good things to say about him. I tell everybody, he was one of the greatest of all times. That was the era we were basically about the same age. And he was the guy to be. If you wanted to go to West 4th, wherever you went, Angel was the guy to be. Because he was really the best at that.